Australians love a competition as much as our whiting fishing, but when it comes to Aussies, there is no greater rivalry than North versus South. In this episode, we find out which state leads the way when it comes to catching whiting. Yes, Gold Coast whiting action starting to heat up. And that's what you fish for whiting, mate. There's another nice fish. Oh, yes. It's a better one, Matt. Dueling banjos. <laughs> Then I head to Victoria to find a hidden sea run trout destination. Just what the small creeks and rivers hold around Apollo Bay has been a mystery to me for years. Yep. The fishing show is proudly brought to you by Mercury Marine, BCF, and Spotter's Sunglasses. Australians love their sports and equally love their fishing. State of origin football is big down under during winter, as is whiting fishing. I wondered what would happen if I pitted a northern angler against a southern rival in a no holds barred whiting fish off. And the journey begins on the Gold Coast and southeast Queensland. Terrible weather. Terrible Queensland weather. Queensland winter. Ah well. Shorts on. Let's go fishing. <laughs> Representing Queensland in our Whiting State of Origin Challenge is Robbie Payne. Rob, you've got six hours. Six to, hours. To catch a bigger Whiting than your southern counterpart. At the same time, convince us why your Whiting is Hang better. on, hang on, hang on. You just said Whiting. How can you call them Whiting when you take them out of the water and they ooze this slime and they're, ugh, they're eels. Well, your job should be easy, mate. <laughs> Here it is, let's go. <laughs> While Rob begins looking for a place to fish, it's time to jump on board with Matt Sini in Victoria's Port Phillip Bay. How are you, Nigel, know, right? Mate, this is what you're in for today. You've got to convince all the people out there why your whiting is better. Bigger, much bigger. Yeah, okay, it started already good. And Tastes better. What you've got to do, three key criteria. You've got to catch a bigger one in six hours compared to your northern counterpart, who's also going to get six hours to try and catch a bigger fish than you and at the same time convince us why yours does taste better and why it fights harder. You up for it? Oh, definitely. Always up for a challenge. Good. Same time, we'll learn a little bit about these fish. Yes, we will. And how they work. Absolutely. Right, you do your thing. Let's go. Oh, let's go get them, boys. The King George Whiting is also known as the Spotted Whiting and it's found from southern WA through the southern states and as far north around the corner as Botany Bay in Sydney. It's the biggest of the smelt whiting family, which is a great advantage for Matt Sini. Here in South East Queensland, we're lucky enough to be able to catch these yellowfin whiting all year round. Simple rule of thumb is summertime you fish night and wintertime you fish during the day and that's about as simple as it gets. So we're heading out of Martha Cove. Um, we've got about a 20 kilometre journey out to our whiting grounds, uh, which is on the other side uh, of the bay. The fish have been, they haven't been huge fish, none of the big 48s and 50s at the moment, but we're definitely getting some fish up around 40 centimetres. So um, hopefully, if we can get a couple of those 40s, 42s, we should have it, should have it covered pretty much. Well, considering it's for the state, and uh, this is probably one of our uh, one of our biggest uh, icon iconic fish in Victoria. I'll leave the silly banana benders up there chasing their uh, flatties on sticks and plastics and all that sort of stuff, and we'll show them how to catch whitey. Eh? The main thing with the worms is to make sure that you put, always put a worm on head first. That goes for beach worms, wriggler worms, rock worms, mud worms, it doesn't matter which worms you're using, always put them on head first. So the easiest way that I've, or the best way I've found to put them on is grab a little bit of worm, miss a bit, grab a bit, miss a bit, grab a bit, thread it on the hook, slide it back over the eye of the hook so it holds there and you end up with a, with a nice worm bait like that. We're going to fish in about seven metres of water today. Um, all you need for King George Whiting is uh, your sand and weed holes. Um, not so much on a flat area, it can be good. Wherever you've got the weed and sand holes, it's nice to find a little bit of a drop off, whether it be a foot or a metre. In this case, we've gone from six metres to about 6.8. So we've just parked the boat nicely on that edge. We've got a beautiful run out tide till about eight o'clock tonight. And that's exactly what they like. This looks really good here, Nigel. You can see the sounder, you can see the break lines in the in the water column here. But uh, the Victorians, you know, they, they really haven't got much. Our whiting 
they get right up in the shallows up there. Their whiting have to be in deep water. They just, they just got no go about them. Owls just, they're tough. In the shallows, take on the birds, take on everything. They just handle everything. I'll get the anchor then, eh? <laughs> let's go, Robbie. Right, Time's right, ticking. Let's do it. Give us those worms. <laughs> what? Did you see that? That was a proper whiting bite. Oh, that's it. Got him on, mate. Well done. No, nah, it's got to be a, got to be a, got to be a toad. This one. Oh, he's coming under the boat. I think we got the right one on. I better back the drag off a bit. We might have a good blue spot flathead, actually. No, we got the right type. That's good. In Melbourne here, this this is classed as a game fish. All right, he's just about to take a dive here. Oh yeah, that's what we want first up. That's a pretty good score on that. That's probably oh, Nigel. That's probably as about as big as you're going to get here in Port Phillip Bay, um, down this this part of the this area. He's probably he's probably 40 centimetres. Beautiful fish. All right. Um, that's a that's a that's a good fish for our for our uh, starting fish. Yeah. So. That's a cracker and balls of muscle. Obviously, you look at their mouth, they'll tell you how they feed, don't they, mate? Yes, so, downwards, yep. They say they're benthic carnivores. They like eating protein on the bottom, and that mouth basically tells you. There's a beauty that Matt has of chasing the biggest of the whiting. King George, and that one's 41 centimetres, and that's going to be a tough ask, especially being first one off the rank. And I reckon he might have a few centimetres in him, yet yeah, he's just warming up. Now walk back, walk back, walk back. That's it? Yeah, got him. Yes. Does Obviously. it feel like a whiting night? I'm not sure yet, mate. I don't know your whiting around here quite like you do. Well, our whiting are pretty skillful up here because those southerners, they, they live in deep water. They can't handle the shallow water. Our tough whiting up here, they can bury in the sand, get under nets. They're just out of control. They're unbelievable. There you go, that's a whiting. There you go. Oh. <sighs> Oh, look at that noise. Beautiful. Oh, he'd have to be 32, 34. He's Somewhere chunky. around that mark. Is our sand whiting. So many species of whiting around Australia, but two of the really popular ones, obviously down south, we've got the King George. In the northern parts of the east coast, we get the sand whiting. The bigger cousin over in the west coast, we get a similar species known as the yellow fin. There's obviously a slight variation in them. They're all closely related with slight differences, but this one, he grows to about 50 centimetres and 1.2 kilos. That's, that's pretty much as big as they get. This guy's a, you'd probably say, slightly bigger than average. Not a bad start. And there we go, that one is 34 centimetres. That's a very handy start for Rob. We've got a, probably a knot or two of current here. Um, the secret with King George Whiting in Victoria is to actually use a slightly bigger sinker than what you need. Um, once we get the sinker on the rod, uh, when we cast our bait out, we bounce the sinker, and the noise is actually what attracts the fish to the to the bait. So it's a very important that every every five to ten seconds that we lift our rod and, and puff up the sand there. Mate, you've got a bait board with mussel and squid. That's dinner, mate. What's best? We always start off with mussel because yeah. when we hook our first whiting, as we bring them up, they they regurgitate the mussel up, and it creates a burly trail. Um, and then once we've got them going. On that, we can simply just put a nice little squid strip on, mate, and it's just, just easy. Just I'd crack on, mate. Five and a half left. Ah, oh, well, the boys up north haven't probably even found a spot to fish yet, so I can't be doing that bad. Nige, probably one of the big things that, that can make your whiting fishing a lot more successful is making sure that every cast counts. Once you cast the reel, feather the reel so as the, the bait overtakes the sinker and lands flat, so you know that that cast is going to count. Got him, Robbie. Got him. How's this one? Do we need a scoop or what I do you got? What do you got, Nigel? Has he got his head down? He's doing the whiting thing. He's, he's got his head down like a whiting. He's not a monster. We'll take him, I reckon. He's similar to the last one. Anyway, it's not an upgrade oh, he's a for bit us. smaller, that fella. There we go. I just didn't lose him. I was happy about that, Robbie. You I'm did afraid well. to lose him now that you're giving me the talking to. <laughs> Don't lose him, Nigel. This is an important competition for me. <laughs> Don't want to see those southerners get up. One of the best ways to learn how to catch whiting is obviously to 
not leave the rod and rod holder like that, that's a lazy way, but keep the roller or the reel up the top and just use your one finger, pull the line like this and point the rod at the fish rather than using the tip of the rod to feel the bite. When you uh, point the, the rod at the fish, it's direct contact to your finger. So you'll feel them pulling on the bait and then when they pull just that little bit hard enough, you know, you know to strike. Yes. Got him? Yeah. Oh, that's a better one. See that? Good, <laughs> good sand hole, Nigel. <laughs> you picked it. Good fish. We've got a, bit, a little bit of dirty water today, so um, it, it really gives us some good, a good chance to fish in shallow where it's generally clean. Oh, some nice whiting. You really shouldn't let them dive because that's when they get you off, but. Oh, he's got to go. There we go. <laughs> Another fantastic riding. He's about 38 centimetres, and we just made a quick move into shallower water. It's a little bit dirty, and uh, first cast, bada bing, bada boom. Fantastic fish. I'm going to keep going. Anywhere you go, the basic, simple running sinker on a swivel and the length of your trace can vary. I've, I'm running quite a few rods here today. We're running six rods with different leader lengths. Some days they like shorter ones, some days longer but just vary it and see what works for yourself. Sometimes when these, uh, when these big fish are on their game, it's just <laughs> straight down, but the classic, the classic whiting bite is just a little, little bite, then the rod will load up. Got him. Yep. Got him, oh, yes. Got just him. keep pressure on him in case he rolls. Some of those big ones are only just lip hooked. That's oh. a whiting. Oh. I don't know if he's, don't know if he's bigger than the first one. No. no, he's not going to be an upgrade for you, Robbie. Not an upgrade? No. We'll put him on the measure in a second, see if he's going to upgrade. I don't think he will. Nonetheless, he's a great eating fish. Targeted by so many Queenslanders, beach and estuary. They just love these guys. And just like the southern counterparts, you can see they feed in very similar manner. Big snuffling nose will actually plough the ground. Big mouth, downturn, made for sucking up worms. They predominantly eat worms and bivalves. And his body is well designed for that. Also for a little burst of speed, a light line, great sport fish. 30 centimetres. We need bigger, Robbie. Come on. Oh yes, saw that. It's a better one, Matt. He's all right. How you oh. reckon they go pound for pound? Mate, they're probably one of the best, best fighting fish for their size. I know we say that about kingfish and we say that about everything, but I mean, I mean that there, that's only, a 35 centimetre whiting and on like gear, you can have an absolute ball. They're starting to play, Robbie. They're starting to play? They're starting to play. All right. Whoa! Oh, yes. <laughs> what happened there, Noah? He smoked it. <laughs> he has belted that. What is it? <laughs> Gold Coast whiting action starting to heat up. Look out, Seeny. <laughs> Robbie's coming home with a wet sail. <laughs> You've done oh, well. I lost it. Ah, oh, Nige. Oh. That is the cardinal sin. Now we've got to wait 15 minutes for another bite. Ah. Oh. Cardinal sin when you're fishing for particularly schooling fish when you lose one. Sometimes freaks out the pack. I think Robbie's talking to me at the moment. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Ah, it's all good, Nige. It's all good. Generally, once you get those five really quick bangs, yep. if you haven't got him, he's got you. Oh, he's back again now. That's why it pays to put that little bit of squid on. Yeah. That's not a knife. That's a knife. That's, I love that when you when you leave it in the rod holder like gone. that, and it just, <laughs> and it just buckles. buckles like a Port Phillip Bay snapper. That's you know what the magic word is when you're fishing? Let's make a move. Whatever you say, let's make a move, you get a bite. Whatever you say, let's have something to eat, you get a fish. Nice one too. What do you reckon, Ooh, Nige? Well, I reckon you may. Ooh, you reckon he's, yeah. you reckon he's just, oh, yeah. I reckon he might go up a centimetre here. Up a centimetre? I reckon. Ooh. 40, 41. Another 41. Um, you can obviously catch a, catch a big fish on a little hook, but you can't catch a little fish on a big hook. So I'm using a, a long, shank, long shank mustard hook here. Um, some of the, some people use the short shank hook so you don't have to use as much bait. 
but that's my preference. It, it doesn't really matter, it's whatever you're confident with. It's okay, we're not panicking yet. Taking some line there, Nigel, see the rods, rods yep, down. Yep, yep. He's taking line on the reel, so I'll yes. just grab hold of it. Stake up, and got him. Cop that, Matt. The Queenslanders are coming back. Oh, oh yeah, this, this, might be, this might be a better one. This Net. might be a better one, might be a real one. You've got a fish on this one too, I reckon. <laughs> That's a better one. <laughs> That's a chunky one. <laughs> This is worth putting on the measure. This is, that's a little bit better. They probably go about 36, 37, something like that. He's just touching 38, mate. 38? 38, 38 yeah, centimetres. Well, uh, we're getting up there, Nigel. That's a great quality sand whiting. Wherever you choose to chase them, New South Wales, Queensland, these guys are found down around the east coast of Victoria and even the east coast of Tasmania. Wherever you chase these, that's a good sized one. Nige, that's almost the holy grail on the uh, trusty old LV and the uh, surf rod in the boat, which does make it difficult. You've got to have good rod management, but we'll keep trying and see whether we can crack the holy grail of 40 centimetres. Mate, so much water out here. Why do you, why here? Okay, well, well basically, um, you can see yourself, Nige, yep. at the sand and weed holes. Yep. Um, and it's not just, you know, a big blotch of weed and then a big sand hole. It's it's actually really broken. Yes. So it's a consistent dark colour with little pockets of uh, of white in it. And just over there, you'll see there's a lot of sand sand bank with with weed in it. But this is the most luscious part. This is where the jungle is. We like to yep. call it. Yep. Um, so very critical that you have a great pair of sunglasses that you can see in the water. Um, anything up to sort of eight metres of water, we can we can see the bottom. Yep. Um, and and then deeper than that, we use our fish finder. And we, we, you know, we see the flat parts versus the the, the higher up and down parts, and um, and that's where you fish for whiting, mate. Well, there's another nice fish. What how those poor Queenslanders are going? Oh, that uh, might be a bit brimish this one. Did you get a flash then, Nigel? Oh yeah, it's yes. A it's a come, come on. He's not an upgrade, but Nigel, he's still he's a nice a, fish. He's a nice fish. Yes. <laughs> I feel better now. The whiting are back. I might be forgiven. <laughs> oh, I'm getting the fight yep, here. Got him. Nice. Got him, Robbie. Got him. Oh, my oh. fellow is just gaining momentum. Got a bit of go in him. Yes. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. I've dropped mine. I've done the Cardinal Sin Oh, right. Robbie. I've got mine, though. Oh. Got mine. Oh, oh that's a up. nice one, Nige. Oh, still not an upgrade. <sighs> Doesn't matter, we're catching them. <laughs> Before we even get to measure that one, we've got another one. Let's have a look how they both go. Okay, so we've got a 33 and a 34. Not bad, not bad. Yep, he's on. Help me catch a toad in that. No, he's staying deep, oh, mate. You got a go. ting. Got a hell of a whiting. Well done, buddy. <laughs> That's there a whiting. Go. Every day of the week, buddy. Oh, there we go. That's what the fuss is about. A southern whiting, King George. With Matt the Master, apparently. He's called around here. Is that right, Matt? Matt the Master? That's is that it, only mate. your missus that calls you that? Oh, well. Beautiful. Okay, Nige. Oh, this one's a bit angry. He feels a little bit like a whiting. Certainly not an upgrade, but uh, a nice fish at that. Oh, the Victorians, I don't know. With their, they really don't have a lot to look forward to down there. You've got, you've got whiting that drips slime like eels, the poor old snapper that you can catch everywhere, and a gummy shark. Who would eat a gummy shark when you can eat beautiful fish like this that there's no slime on them, they're just absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Whiting? Yep. That was on the drop, that one. Straight onto it. Yep. Oh. One. Yeah, he's all right. I just questioned myself with that little bit of squid. I said, oh, is it good enough to throw out there? And I, sure enough, didn't even get to close the bail arm. Oh yeah, another good one. They're all pretty much of a muchness tonight. They're all that 
39 to 41. When we get that, when we get that one that's over 41, I'm sure they'll hear me from land. You don't have to panic too much. You can let them do their thing because the fish aren't feeling that much resistance. Bite. Got him. Yes. Oh, the other one's going. The other one's going too. Nigel's on that one. Is he? Remember that's four pound line. Let's see how your Queenslander skills go with the old Alvi. Here we go, dueling banjos. <laughs> I grew up in South Africa, mate, with a reel called a Scarborough. It was less sophisticated than an Alvi. I won't hold that against you, Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> he wants it, he owns it, he owns it. Come on. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Get yeah. out time. Finicky bites today. Another nice fish there, he's not going to break any records. Surely the Queenslanders can't be doing as good as this. Bloody Victoria, eh? Freezing cold here in Melbourne, but the fishing's as hot as ever. Oh, cracking fish. Are you upgrading the size yet or what? No, mate. No, he's... Uh, 41's about he's it, He's got to be well and truly bigger than anything those boys have got up there, but I tell you now, he's not as big as the ones we got in our bucket. But he's all right. What is it? That's a whiting. Oh, that's a whiting, Nige. He's not bad either. He's not a bad one. Oh, yeah. Four pound, I'll get the net for that one, I reckon. There you go. Light for the bite, but you've got to just be careful with the landing. Yes. Oh, nice. Another go 32. Again. Jesus, good. 33, 34. You cannot complain about that. <laughs> the whiting are biting, and it's very exciting. Yeah, like it's a good one. You've always been impressed with the southern whiting. The southern whiting? The southern whiting. I've never heard them. Never well, heard southerners them. versus northerners, so yeah, yeah they are. Well, they are a southern whiting. They're from like all the southern states, a bit of WA, yes. New South Wales. Yep. The biggest of the, of the group, so you can't argue with that, can you? No, and um, they do get very big, apparently. The, the fishery is definitely healthy. In Melbourne, um, it is, like I said, it's, it's, our, it's our most fish for fish, really. Like, they're snapper even like that, but this fish is all round. Uh, everyone can go and catch them. Um, they've stopped netting in Port Phillip Bay now. Anyone can come out and catch whiting. It's, it's basic, and um, it's fun, and they taste fantastic. Come on, there he goes, there he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Yes. Got him. This could be it, Nigel. Could it be? Come on, come on. Come this on. could be it. Okay, I'll get it for you. There he's you go. Chunky. No, no, he's oh, 37, mate. 37. Look at you. 37. Go. Oh, just fell off. I seen that hook just in his lip. Like I reckon I was five seconds away from being in trouble then, <laughs> but I'm not. I've called it at 37. 37. Nigel. Let's put him on the measure. 36. It wasn't as big as I thought. No. no. Well, Nige, I've just had a, a little bite. The uh, the southerly is starting to kick in. I think we've done our dash with the uh, with the worms. We've only got mud left in our bucket here at the moment. So, but mate, we had four hours. I think we've dusted those Victorians with our um, glamorous yellowfin whiting that we catch up here in the wonderful southeast Queensland. We got the Queenslanders by a mile now. <laughs> We're just going to wind them in backwards. <laughs> oh, what's going on here? A bit of time. Not up to your usual standard, mate. No, Pulled no. Hard for a little one, that one. He did, mate. He did. <sighs> like your recession has gradually Almost. come to a close, and I'd say you haven't been able to top your first fish, but that's not a bad sign because the first one was pretty solid. He and was I, a good fish. Yeah. And well, you've done well. Thanks, buddy. You've probably done your, your southern fishers proud. You've taught us a bit about whiting. Yes. Shown us why you love them, and there's a whole lot to love about them. Oh, absolutely. Got a very handy feed to boot. Yeah. And speaking about booting, it might be time to boot that anchor up and... Hit the road. Get out of here, because as a Queenslander myself, I am feeling the cold of the southern states. <laughs> what a wuss. Righto, got this one in the bag. Let's get out of here. Just as Matt Sini thinks he's got it in the bag, He's not aware there's a little surprise just around the corner. Come to the end of our sessions, Matt Sini with his six hours, Rob Payne because he ran out of bait and he needed four hours. 
What I neglected to tell our anglers is that there's a factor involved with the final result. And what we factored in was the total size that the different whiting species grow to. Matt Sini chased the King George whiting, which grow to around 70 centimetres. He caught a 41 centimetre one, which if we factor it, rounds up to about six out of 10. Six out of 10. Sand whiting grow to 50 centimetres, of which you caught a 38 centimetre one. Yep. Rounded up out of 10, you score eight out of 10 and you are the winner. Queenslander, yes, yes we won again. <laughs> Matt Sini, I'm sorry you've come second on this occasion, but <laughs> knowing how competitive you are, I've no doubt that there will be a round two somewhere along the line. I'm Bill Classen and I've fished all my life and for the last 30 years I've managed Australia's largest fishing and outdoor media company, AFN Fishing and Outdoors. Now new fisheries have always fascinated me and I've witnessed success stories from all around Australia. So recently when I heard about trout being stocked in the rivers and streams around Apollo Bay in Victoria's West, I pricked my ears up. Why? Because this struck me as being odd, as I couldn't remember any recent stockings in these waters. And when I checked the records, there weren't any there either. So this means that these fish are potentially a long-lived and wild self-sustaining population, which is something pretty unique within Australia. So I decided to go and investigate. And who better to help me than my good mate Trevor Hawkins. He's not only a gun fly fisher, but he's also one of the world's best fish artists. Well, it's 5 a.m. in the morning and I'm finally on the way to solving the mystery of the Apollo Bay trout. Now, Apollo Bay is midway along the Great Ocean Road, only about two hours drive west of Melbourne. It's a coastal town of only a thousand people, but it's one of the most popular destinations for anglers along the road. Now the thought of finding a wild population of trout began to sound more appealing the closer I got to Apollo Bay. Now while I drove from Melbourne, Trevor headed down from his hometown of Ballarat where I took him away from his painting for a couple of days. I was really looking forward to catching up and using a mix of fly and lure fishing techniques to help us team up and just find out what was going on with this unique local population of trout around Apollo Bay. Well, Trevor, this looks promising. I didn't even know these gems existed. Move them, mate. We're yeah. about 10 kilometres out of Apollo Bay at Smythes Creek. This is the Great Ocean Road, the road bridge, and this is the pool. Hundreds of fishermen must drive over this bridge every day. Yes. Mate, I can't wait. Let's go and have a go. We've got the surf just, just to the back of us. Those bubble lines are often a good indicator of where the fish will be lying because that's where the food will be channeled. Dream, oh he's got it. Hey! Nice fish. Now it didn't take long for Trevor to get one of these beautifully marked trout to bite. I quickly learned that these streams are simply picturesque. Mostly they're bouldery, which is what we call freestone. They run hard and cold from the coastal mountains to the sea, often less than 10 kilometres in length. To think that these local fish have been looking after themselves for so many years was quite extraordinary. Oh, yep. Nice little brownie, beautiful. That's better. Took the royal wolf. Slashed us as it came past the rock. Just as he'd gone past the boulder, just as it drifted past a nice little shoot boulder. Beautiful, look at the spots on this. They're not big, but they're beautiful, oh, and there's heaps of them. Happy with them Man. every day of the week, mate. Trevor uses trout like these as his inspiration for his colour schemes. He's a fantastic painter, from landscapes to abstracts, and he's one of the world's best fish artists. 
is particularly known for his angling art, as well as painting any fish, animal or flora that can be found near a trout stream. He instinctively knows the shape of a fish and always manages to get their colours right, which can be one of the most difficult parts of painting fish. And he's second to none when it comes to putting it on the canvas. Don't fall for the trap, which is a lot of anglers do in these sort of situations of making 40 and 50 foot casts because they can. It's not, it's not a smart fishing move. Keep them short, keep in control, pepper the water. It's important to put well, maybe only a metre between each cast up the river. If you can go any further than that, you start possibly spooking with the fly line. You really only want to be jumping up the leader length each time. I've got a fish, mate. There you go. Yep. Good on you. Oh, I can see it too flanking there. It's lovely. Good. Good little brownie. Yeah, he's nice. Right on cue. Yeah, you might have to do the honours, mate. Yeah, easy. He's a nice fish. Lovely. Yeah, good on you. <laughs> hey? In small streams like these, the trout make up for their size by the aggressive way they take the fly. And don't you just love their colours? Some of the most beautiful trout in the whole of Australia. A couple hundred metres from the Great Ocean Road, we're probably five k's out from Apollo Bay. Hearing all the tourists going driving yeah. by down the yeah. Great Ocean Road. Exactly. <laughs> so you can see here, this little brownie's taken the beadhead nymph and Trevor just tied about 40, probably about 50 centimetres of dropper off the bend of his dry fly. And you just watch the fly, fly goes under, brown trout has taken the nymph, wait one second, all over. Good one, Trevor. Thanks, mate. They're not gonna get any prettier than that. That is beautiful, and this has surprised me. So close to the ocean, absolutely magic. Okay, mate, off you go. Beautiful. Lucky you've held your end up on the fly, mate. <laughs> I think it's about time to go and have a look at another creek. Check somewhere else out. Well, there's plenty well, of them, mate. You, what did you tell me about? The Carrows Brook. Carrows Brook. We'll go and have a look at that yep. guy. While trout are not native to Australia, they've been here now for over 150 years. And the trout here in these little creeks could have originated from stockings over 100 years ago. Now, it's natural for trout in their native habitat in the Northern Hemisphere to run between the fresh water and the ocean as part of their natural life cycle. In colder climates such as Tasmania and New Zealand, sea run trout are prevalent, but there are very few places in mainland Australia where trout are classed as sea runners. Trevor and I continued exploring the creeks and rivers around Apollo Bay, searching for that elusive sea run trout. Along with being a prime holiday destination, Apollo Bay is a key destination for Victorian anglers. A lot of the fishing around Apollo Bay is boat based, where you can catch snapper, gummy sharks and King George whiting among the productive offshore reefs. Land based fishing around the ocean is popular too, whether you're fishing off a pier for squid or heading down to the beach to catch some of the fabulous Australian salmon from the surf. Continuing our search for sea run trout, Trevor and I made our way to the Carisbrook River just outside of Apollo Bay. Here, we were hoping to hook a trout in some of the best landscape the region has to offer. It was fast becoming apparent that this area had some real gems of small trout streams. And it's hard to fathom that these idyllic trout streams were literally a stone's throw from the Southern Ocean. I was beginning to consider the real possibility that these fish were genuine sea runners. Look at that up there, Bill. Look mm -hmm. at the cliff up through there. That's possibly where the waterfall is. Yeah. How's that, mate? First cast. Oh, oh, nice, mate. How's that? Nice. Hey, first cast in the Carrows Brook. I'll just jump in here, Trev. Oh, what a... In the shadow of the hey. bridge, mate. In the shadow of the bridge. Lovely. Nice fish. Absolutely lovely. 
He's hammered took that, that little minnow. It. He's hammered it. That's a good <laughs> fish. It is, yeah. A wild fish, beautiful. All right, now it's time for See the fly. <laughs> we'll let this guy go. We're not resting now, mate. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. Back under the bridge, fella. Yeah. Someone else can go catch you well there. Done, you never know, might yeah. be pound the half next time. Yep. Time, mate, yep. get into them up Cheers, here. Mate. I've got to say, it's a pretty unique experience to be able to cast a lure to a trout right behind the sand dunes and watching the waves break on shore. Oh! Oh! Oh, mate, it was a bloody thumper, right? Bloody hell, he goes. He's about twice the size of your one, Bill. Really? He just went down there then. Oh, big fish! Big fish! Oh, f Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Trevor. Two fish in a row. Both probably twice the size of the one Billy's just got. On the dry fly, and both of them are disconnected on me. Unbelievable. He's come, come out of that, that other one come out of here. That one just come out of that little that hole up in the No, mate, he's serious sitting in there. Yeah. And he's just lying in there. Now, when you're fishing with Trevor, it's always going to be competitive. And he absolutely hates losing the fish. After losing two in a row, I knew it was probably best to give him a bit of space before catching up to him again. This is a coastal stream, not a meadow stream, a coastal stream. Yep. Woo! Woo! Oh, look at that for a silver. Well, not quite the size of the other ones down there that I just missed, but a stunning little sea run fish by the colouring of him. Beautiful. We were still getting used to targeting trout in this coastal environment, and every pool held fish of varying size. The fact that some were sea run made it even more special. Quite often at this earlier time of the season, it's worth waiting till after lunch to really hit a stream because the weather's generally quite cold in the morning, the insects aren't up. As soon as, it, as soon as it warms up, the insects get out, the trout will generally start looking up, which is what we're doing now. It's an afternoon and the insects are around and the trout are looking up. Yep. Oh, he's a nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, he's about the same. I thought he was bigger than that. He's nice though. These are not tiny stream fish. They're good, meaty fish. Get tangled up with the lead of this bloke. To... They may be small creek, but they're not small fish. That's a respectable trout, brown trout anyway. And he took it like there was no tomorrow. It was a pleasure walking the banks of a beautiful trout stream and watching Trevor work his magic. There's always something special about watching trout rise to a dry fly. The fact that it was happening with the sounds of the surf in the background made it even more so. So what do you think of that? 45 yeah. minutes of? Absolute bliss, mate. That's dry fly bliss, mate. heaven. As our day came to an end, it was back to Apollo Bay to enjoy the atmosphere of the town, its great restaurants, and of course, to recall the adventures of the day. Apollo Bay is a beautiful seaside town that offers something for every angler. The harbour, boat access to the ocean with a fantastic boat ramp. The local streams offer fabulous sea run trout and there's always the possibility of catching an Australian salmon off the beach. And to top it all off, the scenic views are just truly spectacular. I just love learning about fish and fisheries and never tire of finding new horizons. Not knowing what's around the next bend of the river is just totally addictive.
For details and all the equipment we used in today's show, head to our website, afn.com.au, follow the links to the fishing show, and we'll tell you exactly what we used. And to stay up to date with our latest adventures, head to our Facebook page, AFN Fishing and Outdoors, and you'll find out exactly where we are and when. It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show, and if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.